solving polynomials. So the instructions there on your page say find all roots. Now, if you will recall, I tried to emphasize that uh, roots, solutions, zeros, x-intercepts, all those words should make you think the same thing. I'm trying to solve this equation. Now, the key to any polynomial equation, when you're trying to solve it, it, it has to be equal to zero. Now, they've made life easy on us here. All of these are equal to zero. We don't have to do any work uh, for that part like we do with quadratics. Sometimes with quadratics we had to get everything on one side so that it was equal to zero. These are already set equal to zero. You may have to do that in the future though. Make sure everything's equal to zero and then proceed from there. So we are going to uh, do as much factoring as we possibly can to solve these and then see what we're left with. We may have to use another technique after we factor. So let's look at number one. x cubed plus 5x squared plus 6x is equal to zero. What is our first step always when we try to factor? What should we always look for? A GCF. Do all my terms have something in common? Do all these terms have something in common? Yeah, they all have an X. All right, so let's start by factoring out that X. So when we do that, we're left with X squared plus 5X plus 6. Okay. Now, here's why I always emphasize you, when you take out a GCF, it doesn't just disappear. You've got to keep it in front of the problem because you lose something if you don't. Now, can we factor x squared plus 5x plus 6? Yes. x plus 3 times x plus 2. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 plus 2 is 5. So, that is fully factored now. So, we set all of our factors equal to 0. And we solve them for x, and that is going to give us our three expected solutions because this is a cubic function. So x equals 0. There's no solving that needs to be done there. That one's done. Uh, for the next one, we subtract 3. So x equals negative 3. That's our second solution. And we subtract 2. So x equals negative 2 is our third solution. It's an equation. You can always check these by plugging it back into the original. You could graph it and make sure that it crosses the x-axis at 0, negative 3, and negative 2 uh, because solutions, zeros, roots, they're all x-intercepts. Okay? Okay? Let's look at number 2. Okay? x cubed minus 6x squared plus 10x is equal to 0. It's a cubic function, so we are expecting three solutions. So we need to factor out an x here. When we do that, we get x squared minus 6x plus 10 is equal to 0. Can we factor x squared minus 6x plus 10? Hmm. Be nice if we could, but I don't think there's anything that multiplies to give us 10 and adds to give us 6. So, when we couldn't factor with quadratics, what was another option? Quadratic formula. Okay, we could complete the square, but I kind of prefer the quadratic formula. So, we have one solution. We do know that x equals 0 because we do have that x in front. We do have one solution, x equals 0. So let's use the quadratic formula to find our other two. So our a is 1, our b is negative 6, and our c is 10. And that comes from the quadratic that, that is left. It doesn't come from the original problem. Okay. So our quadratic formula says x equals the opposite of b. b is already negative 6, so it becomes positive 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared is 36, minus 4 times a is 1, times c is 10. All of that is over 2 times a, which is 1. So that is 36 minus 40, which is negative 4. What happens when we have a negative under the square root? It comes out as i, and is 4 a perfect square? Yeah. 
Okay, the square root of negative 4 is 2i. We can divide both of those by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So our solutions are x equals 0 and x equals 3 plus or minus i. That's two solutions, 3 plus i, 3 minus i. Now, I don't know about you, I'm a little skeptical when I don't get a whole number, so let's check that. Let me show you how to check that. Um, make sure that you are in imaginary mode. Okay, don't forget about that. Uh, 3 plus i, I'm going to store that as x. And then I'm going to plug it in. x cubed minus 6x squared plus 10x, and that should give me 0. And it does. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I divided both of those numbers by 2. Oh. You're going to do 2 in the bottom. Okay. All right. Okay, let's look at number 3 x cubed plus x squared minus 5x minus 5 is equal to 0. What kind of factoring do we need to do there? Grouping. That's what we learned yesterday. We need to group it. Four terms tell us that we need to group it. So x cubed plus x squared, what do they have in common? x squared. Okay, so we are left with x plus 1. Uh, what do we need to take out of negative 5x minus 5? Negative 5. That leaves us with x plus 1. Remember, those have to be the same. So we've got our GCFs together, x squared minus 5, and our common linear factor, x plus 1. Now, x squared minus 5, it's not the difference of perfect squares, okay? Because 5 is not a perfect square. But it is a very easy equation to solve when it's set equal to 0. So I'm going to set both of these equal to 0. Uh, x plus 1 equals 0 is a very easy one to solve. x equals negative 1. Okay, let's look at this other one. x squared minus 5 is equal to 0. We're trying to get x by itself. So how about we start by adding 5 to both sides. So x squared is equal to 5. What's the opposite of squared in something? Square root. Take the square root of both sides. Now, here's what you can't forget with the square root. you got to include the plus and the minus. Okay? Negative square root of 5 squared is positive 5, and positive square root of 5 is uh, squared is 5. Okay? Um, and we can check that. Okay? So easy to check. Yeah, no problem. All right. Always, always, always check your equations, guys. There's no reason not to. Square root of 5, we want to store that as our x. x cubed plus x squared minus 5x minus 5 should give us 0 and a plus. Okay? Um, now, I also try and point that out as often as I can to remind you of the fact that if you're doing a multiple choice test or something like that and you're asked, to solve this equation, and you look at that and you say, I have no clue. Well, you're given four answer choices right there. Start plugging them in and seeing if the left side equals the right side. All right? Um, so, I really do want you, you should be able to solve this, and this is going to be quicker than plugging in on your answer choices, but if you do get to that point and you just have no clue, plug in your answer choices. Okay? All right, number four, x cubed minus 125 equals zero. What is that? Difference of perfect cubes. That's what we did yesterday as well. Okay, so difference of perfect cubes. Let's see if we remember how this goes. Okay, uh, cube root of x cubed is x. Cube root of 125 is 5. Square the x. Square the 5. Multiply them together. So... Same sign is negative, opposite sign is positive, the last sign is always positive. So, x minus 5 is equal to 0, that one's easy. x equals positive 5. x squared plus 5, x plus 25, I told you yesterday, it doesn't factor any further, so our only choice 
is the quadratic formula. So A is 1, B is 5, C is 25. So X equals the opposite of B. That becomes negative 5 plus or minus the square root of B squared. 5 squared is 25. Minus 4 times A, which is 1, times C, which is 25. All over 2 times A. So, let's see here. 4 times 25 is 100. 25 minus 100 is negative 75 over 2. So we've got negative 5 plus or minus. We've got a negative under the square root. That comes out as an I. Now, um, I'm going to tell you this. The answer key is not going to have the square root of 75 on there. And here's why. Because 75 is divisible by a perfect square. 25 goes into 75. So I haven't shown y'all this yet, but let's look at this really quickly. 75 is 25 times 3. The square root of 25 is 5. So that comes out of the square root, okay? The square root of 25 is 5, so we put that outside the square root. 3 is not a perfect square, so it stays under. That's the answer that they're going to have on the next equation, okay? So whenever you've got a square root, when we had it a second ago, it was a perfect square. So that is square root of 4 is 2. So our square root was wrong. But here, 75 is not a perfect square. It is divisible by a perfect square. So you want to express that number as a perfect square times something else. So 25 times 3 is 75. The square root of 25 is 5. So that comes out. We can't take, we can take square root 3, but it's not a perfect square. So it stays out. Um, and 5 and 5 are not visible by 2, so we leave it like that. Okay. If you were to check this answer, you've got to be careful uh, with typing that one in. <clears throat> uh, put the numerator in parentheses. Negative 5 plus 5i square root of 3. Close the parentheses. That's on the square root. Close the parentheses. That's on the numerator. Divided by 2. Store it as x, and then x cubed minus 125. The equation's easy to type in. We did see that. Okay. Very strange answer. Very big answer for such a small problem, but that is the other answer. <clears throat> so it's a cubic uh, function. We expect three solutions. We get one real solution, x equals 5, and then the other two are imaginary. So when we graph this, let me go ahead and show you the graph of this so we can kind of connect a few things here. x cubed minus 125. When we look at that graph, it just looks like a line. Okay, it's because it's so big. Uh, but it crosses the x-axis once at 5. Uh, I can zoom out here so maybe you can see a little bit more. Okay, uh, this is a really, really tall cubic function because... The uh, y-intercept is negative 125. Um, so if I zoomed out a little bit more, you can barely even see the graph. But anyways, um, it crosses the x-axis once. It's a cubic function. We expect it to cross three times. So since it only crosses once, that means our other two solutions are imaginary or complex. Okay? Um, they're not real number solutions. Okay, let's do two more examples together. Uh, and then I'm going to let you practice with this a little bit. Let's look at number 5. x cubed plus 10x squared plus 25x equals 0. As always, look for a GCF first. Okay, so we take out the x. x squared plus 10x plus 25 is equal to 0. Does that quadratic factor? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, it sure does. Does it have a special name? Probably. If I ask that question, the answer is yes. Okay. It's a perfect squared trinomial. Okay. Um, 25 is a perfect square. X squared is a perfect square. And it's three terms. Okay. So this is X 
plus 5 times x plus 5. Remember?